Righty A, so today I've um, got my little Tika T3 in 223 REM out of the cupboard because all my old, all my normal brass, which I uh, brought with the gun originally, it's all starting to crack in the neck. So I thought I needed some new brass and I ended up getting on to 250 pack of Nosla brass. I thought that'll do, that'll do the life of this gun pretty much. So 250 brand new brass. Um, looking nice and shiny. Measure them up a bit. They seem like they're right to go. I just need to um, basically neck size them. Um, but what I've got to do now is load development because obviously changing from Norma to Nosla, even though I think they're made in the same factory, I need to just make sure the load that I had developed for the Norma brass is going to work with the new Nosla brass. And yeah, it's got a lot to live up to because that's the kind of groups it's capable of at 100 yards, five shots in that one. Three shots in that one at 0.262. So it does shoot very well. What I'm using is. So this is what I used with the Norma brass. So I'm hoping it all goes the same way. Maybe I might have to change the powder charge. Uh, hopefully, everything like the seating depth and the projectile and everything. I know that the, the gun shoots these projectiles, which is the 52 grain. Hollow Point Boat Tail from Sierra, Match King. Uh, deadly on foxes and rabbits. Uh, really super accurate. Nice little uh, boat tail on them. A um, bit easy to load in these little cases, you know. Fiddly little things. So the flat bases sometimes end up crushing the neck a little bit if you're not careful. Uh, so these are definitely a lot easier um, to reload the little ones. 2208 and CCI 400 small rifle primers and I'm using the RCBS uh, neck size neck die set um, yeah so let's get on with it and see how we go I'll load up a few uh, I won't load up many maybe five and then I'll go and shoot them uh, group shoot them I'm just going to go straight for the throat and see if I can just load the same powder and um, powder charges the old load, uh, even though they're brand new brass, um, so they're probably not going to fit the chamber as well as the, you know, half a dozen fired uh, Norma brass, which, you know, we'll just see how they go on the first firing. Um, if it shows potential, I might load that same five back up and see if they tighten up with the on the second firing once they've sort of fitted to the chamber a little bit so just for these um, first initial loads I will weight sort this brass just to give it every chance to group um, once I know that it's capable I'm, I don't get that fussy with the brass I don't, certainly don't throw any away or push them to the side because I'm only really shooting targets with this gun so um, I just would like to see it have every chance at getting you know a very consistent load so we'll just do a couple of these 94.7 yeah, so it's not too bad right I so I had to do a bunch of weighing because they're, they're fairly wild actually but this is sort of the average and what kept popping up fairly regular was 94 grains or just a tiny touch over 94.1 so those 10 there are right around within 0.1 of a grain of each other so and that seemed to be roughly in the center of what was heavy and what was light in that uh, I probably just did 30 um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run them through the neck sizer a little bit of lube here on the be too fussed about it. Small brass, it's pretty easy to size. Not 
a bit rough. I haven't got all the gear, but anyway. This press is my dad's. He got it when he was 21. He's 68 now, so still going alright. I will just give him a quick chamfer. Help that bullet glide in there a little bit better. I used to just throw throw the powder out of here. It's pretty accurate. I usually try to keep it just a little touch lower than where I want to be. And I used to run it over a balance beam, but now I've just got this uh, digital level, not level, digital scale off the internet, and it weighs down to 0 0.001 of a grain. So I just rely on it now. So I just calibrate it, make sure it's weighing what it should with the little supplied weight. Right, that's a pass. Put it on grains. Yeah. The load is 26 grains. 2208. Yeah, this is already preset. To seek a bullet. I'm a bit old school, I don't have a trickler. I can't remember how many granules I'm going to need here. Won't be many. One or two. Three maybe. That's twenty five point nine eight. I pay a fair bit of attention when I'm seeding these little bullets because if you don't get them nice and straight first up they tend to kick in the uh, neck and it can sort of elongate your neck if they don't go straight down I like to half seat them turn them 180 and fully press it in and that should be nice and straight and ready to go one done Beautiful. There we go, we've got five loaded up, ready to go. Um, now, I'm not going to expect the brand new brass to group as good as the uh, fire formed Norma brass that I've been shooting. And one of the main reasons is for that is obviously your chamber's cut to a certain size, and this brass is manufactured to the same, to a specific size. Um, to a spec, I think it's called Sammy spec or whatever, um, and that's so that this brass will fit in any chamber that's been cut to factory uh, Sammy specs. But each chamber is obviously slightly different to the next, even in the same brand of rifle. So what what you need to do is this will uh, you'll fire this and. Um, Maybe it'll group really well. Uh, if you've got a tight chamber, the better. But after the first firing, this brass will expand out to the chamber and the second firing should always group up a bit better. So let's see what happens.
Well, how's that? Brand new brass. The original load. There's five in there. That's my finger now. Well, there's my thumb now. It's got to be less than half an inch. Looks like three are almost in the same hole. There's four in there. There's, so there's one. And then there's one, two, three, four in that ragged hole. So I'm bloody wrapped with that. I'll shoot another group just to see whether or not that weighing out the brass makes any difference. Like you can see that group there. Like that's the first five shots out of that new brass. Half inch five shots at 100 yards. Let's see what not weight sorting your brass does. Give it a go. Because if I don't have to weight, weight sort, then, then I can get half inch five shots. I'll do it. Righto, so I'm back out here today after shooting that fantastic group yesterday afternoon with brand new Nosler brass. So I've got three lots, three batches of five loaded up. So I've got the same load, brand new brass again, just to make sure it wasn't a, a fluke, that last group. Um, and what I've also done is I've loaded up the once fired nozzle brass from yesterday afternoon, just to make sure they still stack in there. And then what I've done for a bit of an experiment is I've I weight sorted, I weighed a heap of brass because yesterday afternoon's group was with weight sorted brass which is obviously these five here. So they're weight sorted, these are weight sorted. These ones, I've tried to get the heaviest one I could find and the lightest one I could find. So I've got one case here that weighed 96.94 grains. And then the lightest one weighs 93.28. So it's like three and a half, 3.6 grains difference just in the brass so it's the same powder same seating depth same bullet just with brass that's wildly different in weight so let's give it a go and we'll see how they group compared to weight sorted brass Through that one. Looks like I've got four in one hole. I got three, four, I mean. There must be three in that one hole, and then obviously one there. So if you took that one away, as shoot error maybe, or I don't know. Pretty uh, impressive. So there we go, that was the uh, the brass that I purposefully 
made all different. So, I shot them in order of heaviest to lightest. So I think we went, the heaviest brass went first shot here. Then there was one, two, and then back up here and then back down again. So there was no real rhyme nor reason to where they went, but that's probably an inch and a bit group, I would say. They all felt pretty good. I did have a little bit of heat shimmer. So the third group here was the second fired brass. You saw the first shot drop in low. I'm um, 100% that was me. Right, oh, so let's talk about this little rifle. Um, it's a Tika Hunter T3 in 223 Remington. Um, Woodstock, obviously. I have not bedded it. I've got a Meopta Meo Pro 4 to 12 by 50 scope on it. Super reliable. Uh, nice fine crosshair. Um, believe it or not. Like this has got covered turrets, but I shoot this at 500 yards and all I do is uh, count up 47 clicks and I can just slap that bit of steel nearly every shot. Uh, with the wind, this thing, you know, you got to judge the wind really well, but if it's a nice calm day, I'll put 10 shots of 10 shots on steel at 500 and all I do is wind back down 47 clicks and I'm inch and a half high at 100 back to your know, hunting uh, or you know just group shooting at 100 um, modifications I've done I put a 10 mil or 12 mil spacer in here to give it the same length of pull as my big gun just to make it feel like a full-size rifle to me um, and I have put in a Tika Tactical trigger spring, which is supposed to be adjustable from 12 to 24 ounces. What I found is on 12 ounces, well, the lowest setting, I don't have a trigger gauge, but on the lowest setting, that would slam fire. Um, so I basically wound it all the way back up to, I think it's just below 24 ounces. Um, and to me, that's probably as light as you really need to go. Um, Tika triggers are exceptional triggers already. There's no creep in these things, they break like glass. There's always shot really well. I don't know whether I fluked a good one, but Tika team seemed to always shoot really well. With factories, it used to shoot around an inch, and as soon as I started reloading, I played with the, you know, the optimal charge weight of the powder. It just shrunk straight in. Once I found the good seating depth, it, this is a half inch gun all day long. Um, if you do your thing. Now, on those targets, you'll see there's the odd bullet that's off. You have to add in shooter error because I am not a machine and I'm shooting prone and I'm shooting in the field. I'm not in a wind tunnel. I'm not a professional shooter by any means. So if I can consistently stack four of those five shots into almost one hole, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm sure this gun shoots better than I can and every now and again we uh, we come together and we do those small groups five shots brand new brass same load as what I was using in my uh, with my Norma brass and now I've switched over to the brand new Nosler seems to be the same load it's going well and then this morning I did a repeat test just to make sure it wasn't a fluke now there is one off there to the left which blew the group out to 0.7 of an inch but four fell into 0.263 of an inch so I'm I'm going to put that uh, one on the left down to me. Um, I don't think it's the ammo or the gun. Now the experiment of the different brass weights they're all written down there for you. You can see there's 3.66 grains difference between the lightest bit of brass and the heaviest bit of brass. Now that group came out at one inch and like you can see there's a definite split in the group which is more than likely due to the different 
um, case capacities of those bits of brass. Anyway, and then I checked the second fired brass. Um, that bottom shot, I called it as me. I had uh, changed something in the rear bag. And if you know, if you're trying to shoot small groups, you cannot change anything. So, uh, still a three quarter inch group, even with that shot down low, but four went into 0.37 of an inch. So, if you took out the couple of flyers out of the left and the right group that you're looking at there, you know, this gun's shooting in the 0.3s and like with the five shot group from yesterday afternoon I'd say this is under a half inch gun with this ammo so I'm stoked with that so I found that uh, interesting um, in other rifles I have they do not group as well with brand new brass um, that's including my 300 Weatherby and the 338 Lapua they like to be uh, the Lapua likes to be on the third fired brass before it really squeezes up with its groups and uh, the Sour and the 300 Weatherby is similar. Um, what I've found with this is with brand new brass it's stacking them right in there so that's pretty handy considering I've got uh, you know 240 odd pieces of brand new brass sitting there ready to go which if I do want those tighter groups it looks like I'm gonna have to wait sort them but I'm hoping that uh, if I go through them, I should be able to find uh, that the large, the greater majority of that brass will be in around that 94 grain bracket, which seemed to be the case last night when I was doing the weight sorting. So if I just go sort of half a grain to each side of 94, I'm going to end up with, I reckon, about 80% of that brass in, uh, in a batch. So, um, but yeah, like if you're going to get into the reloading, these are sort of things you need to try out um, and you can only do it with trial and error but yeah so I'm pretty happy with that result because now I can reload up a heap of brand new brass and I don't have to waste ammo down the barrel uh, wearing out a good barrel that obviously is uh, shooting well to just get onto the second fired or third fired brass to get those nice tight groups so I can just go straight into uh, virgin brass and get it done so that's pretty cool right oh, so that's the end of that one um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, I enjoy making them so if you do enjoy them subscribe for me uh, hit the thumbs up um, leave a comment I love reading all your comments if you've got a suggestion for another video I'm more than willing to uh, have a go at making it um, but yeah, subscribe for me. I'm nearly at 500. I'd love to get way more than that. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. Uh, you know, just get on there and hit that subscribe button for me.